again for more Sewing with Michelle. And this week, I'm going to be poking around with pins. I want to talk to you a little bit about pins, why you should pin, when you should pin, when, if you're like me, you want to be a renegade and um, forego pinning certain things. Um, but obviously the origins of pinning came up years ago when people were sewing clothing together and to get two pieces together to make sure that they stay where they need to be, um, pins were made. And over the years, I know since I've been sewing, since I was very young with my, my grandmothers, up until today, I have had many different types of pins. Um, and I think the process and technology has really defined them and made them better for us quilters and sewers alike today. So I want to talk a little bit about pinning. And the first thing that I want to talk about are my favorite new pins. Now these are called Cool Pins. Um, they're made by the Gypsy Quilter. And I have been using them um, for a little while. I have my little purple ones here in my uh, magnetic pin holder. But I love these pins and I'm going to go over exactly why I love them. Um, the first thing is that they are ergonomic. And I'm going to show you a little bit later with the close up when I show some pinning and um, do some demoing. But the tip of these, it's not a ball point. So typically I remember the first pins I had, um, they didn't even have any sort of glass or plastic or anything on the end of the tip. It was just a flat metal, kind of like a nail, but very, very small for sewing. And those could be difficult to use. And so over the years, um, technology, we added a ball on top. Um, we had plastic balls. How many of you out there on the tip of your pins when they were plastic, ironed over them and then you have a flat area. Way too many times I've done that. So I, I often will, when I have something pinned, give it a nice little pressing and that's why I hate those plastic balls. Um, so I then, after the plastic balls, I started using glass tip and I love my glass tip pins because I never had to worry about them um, with the iron getting misshapen or falling off. They seem to be a little bit more secure to the metal so then um, I ran across these cool pins and I thought, okay, they're new, they're different, um, but I love the shape. So not only do they have the ball point at the end, but they've got a little grip area that makes them ergonomic. So that makes it easier for us to pick them up. I love that. Um, and then guess what? They are heat resistant. So they're not made of glass. They are made of a plastic, but to 350 degrees you can put on top of these and they won't melt. So your iron can iron over your pins, which is a huge plus for me. And um, the next thing is the point. They have a fine tip point. Now going back to years ago when I first started sewing, um, the points on my pin were pretty blunt and um, you kind of had to force them in. So those were old school, old pins. Um, they were great in the day, but now technology, like I said, has changed so many things. So now we have a fine tip. Fine tip means it's gonna leave a smaller hole in whatever you're pinning. Whatever you're poking this through, it's gonna leave a smaller hole, which for me is a total benefit for everything that I do as far as sewing. So I love that fact. Now. Most of the times, and on some of my glass pins, I have fine tip glass pins, but in order to have that fine tip, the shaft seems to be a little bit weaker, and that could be a problem. So these pins, the shaft's pretty strong. So I can pin through my quilt sandwiches, through denim, two layers of denim, wherever, and it will not misshape in this pin. It's strong enough to hold and be secure, and it's still straight. And I've been using these forever. And I will say my glass tip pins that every once in a while I'll pull them out. You can see that some of them are bent, some of them um, are misshapen. These ones are straight as an arrow still because they're strong. So the tip is fine, the shaft is nice and strong, they're easy to pick up, and they're heat resistant. I think I got them all, but those, those are the absolutely why these are my favorite pins. Oh, one other thing, they come in colors. I am um, always motivated by color and these come in blue, pink, and purple. 
So I have the pink here, and these are the purple, and there's one other color that you're able to purchase, and that's the blue. So, once again, cool pens. If you're interested in purchasing these, if you click on the link in the description, you'll find them listed there. Now, let me talk a little bit about pinning. Um, one of the things that has happened to me over the years is I'm pinning and a pin drops on the floor. And I have literally put my toe through I don't know how many pins or needles and it's been a problem and I have a you know I have animal in the house I, my kids are all grown now but when they were younger I was always worried if someone stepping on the pins you know I can be the sacrificial lamb but I don't want anyone in my house that's visiting or you know a permanent member of my family to um, get a pin in their toe I know it hurts and it can be it can be you know painful for a little while so I used to, when a pin dropped, you know, stop everything, stop my sewing, get on the ground, hands and knees, crawl around until you find the pin. Um, and over the years, I had found um, a tool that would help me, and it was one of these. It's a pin picker upper, and it has a telescoping arm, so you don't have to get out of your chair. Um, you can just reach down, pick up your pin, and bring it back up. So I'm going to drop this one on the ground and I simply drop down and look it's right there on the end. Super easy and super functional. So I love that and I have been using mine for a long time but one of the joys that I have had is doing research for what I'm going to show you guys and I saw this one and I went holy guacamole it's lighted so it just amped up the pin picker upper that I already use. So this one's got a little switch here, and you turn it on, and you'll see my face lights up, and it's got a light. Now, as I've aged, my eyesight isn't as good, but when sometimes when your pins drop on the ground, it's like, depending upon your carpet, it could be, you know, you're swimming through the fibers to try to find that. So this light is going to help illuminate where the pin is. I love that. It was just one other thing to make this item Definitely something I had to showcase for you. So this is the um, lighted pin picker upper. It's magnetic, but it will pick up eight pounds. Eight pounds, that's amazing. And I'm gonna show you real quick how strong it is. It will definitely pick up your pins. But one of the other things that I use mine for all the time, and probably more so than picking up pins, is I'll be sewing and maybe I'm quilt wrangling a large quilt and my scissors get knocked off and they drop to the ground. Well, this will pick up your scissors. It'll pick up anything metal, but my scissors probably get the most use from my pin picker upper. So keep in mind, it's not just for pins. You will find that you will be using this for everything. Another thing that I use it for all the time is um, have you ever been sewing and your needle snaps and the very tip of the needle, just a small little fraction, drops down into the bobbin area and you're like, oh crud, I hope it's just right there on top. Well, if you take, if you open up your bobbin case and I simply just put this over the top area and you'll see that that tip of the, the needle will plop up and be on the top of your pin picker upper. So three uses is off the bat where I use this for. So, pin picker upper, scissor picker upper, and broken needle retractor from your bottom area. I love it, and on the fact that it's lighted, it's just a huge plus in my book. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the other camera, and I want to show you some of the reasons why, where I pin and the places that I will forego pinning, but most of all, the places where I never skip pinning. Okay. So first off, I don't know if I can show you real quick, but if you look real close here, you can see that these pins, like I said, they're not a ball on the end. They're actually ergonomic, so it makes them easier to pick up and grasp. And absolutely, it makes your control for when you're pinning um, the best. So, love that. So let me show you why I pin certain things. And first thing I want to show you is how I pin. So I have these two pieces of fabric. Let me turn to the yellow one so you can see a little bit better. And I'm just going to line up the edges like, you know, there's nothing fancy there. 
But what I want to show you is something that I started doing over the years. So basically when you pin, you're going to go through one end and to the other. And I used to take that pin and sometimes that pin would go over the edge. Other times it would just be slightly over. So you can see on this one here, I completely have the pin tip on the other side of the fabric and this one's just in the, in the pathway. So what I do now is I only pin, but I leave it a quarter inch away from the side of the fabric. Now the reason I do that is because most of the times I am using a quarter inch seam. This is still gonna give me security so that my fabric will not shift and get out of um, alignment, but that is gonna make the chances of me hitting that pin with my, my needle that much better. Now, oftentimes when you sew, you're gonna sew up and to the point and then you're gonna pull the pins out of the way so that you don't sew over your pins because I absolutely do not recommend sewing over your pins, which is why I try to leave them a quarter inch away from the edge. But there are times where it is critical to make sure that things don't shift that I will completely sew over the tops. And that is why I always have my tips a quarter inch away from the edge. And if you just get in the habit of doing it that way, then you'll never have a problem of um, your machine hitting your pin, okay? So that's how I pin um, whenever I do pin. Now, with that said, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is some of the reasons why I pin. Now, I am absolutely a renegade. Um, and... I don't always follow directions well. I know my husband could say, yep, that's absolutely a true statement. But um, sometimes if you're reading um, the instructions on something, it'll say pin this. And I kind of, I just, you know, decide then and there, hmm, do I really need to pin or can I get away with not pinning? And oftentimes I will get away with not pinning. But that's because I'm a pretty confident sewer and I'm aware of my abilities. But there's certain reasons and certain times when I don't skip. I don't cut the corners and I make sure I pin. One of those times is when I'm working with strips. Now, when you're working with strips um, that are small, it's more likely that that fabric will stretch or get um, not in alignment. So what I like to do is if I'm doing two thin strips is I pin. And once again, I start at one side and then I go to the other side, lining those up. And then what I like to do next is go to the center. And I will go to the center, making sure that everything is aligned, the sides of the fabric. And then I will pin once in between the lengths. So it's usually somewhere around five inches when I pin in between. So you'll see on this one, about every five inches I've got a pin. And that's generally what I do. If I'm gonna be doing a small section of fabric that's thin, I will definitely pin. And once again, I don't go crazy with my pins about every five to six inches is perfectly fine. So that's one area where I never ever skip the pinning. Now another area is curved piecing. So if I'm making um, some blocks and I have curved piecing, I never skimp on pinning there. And one of the things that I always do for that is I start, once again, I pin the corner, go to the other side, pin that other corner, and then the next thing that I do is I go to the center and make sure that that's in alignment, okay? And then, because it's a curved, I will be a little bit more aggressive with my pinning, and it'll probably be about every one and a half inches. And keep in mind, keeping that pin tip about a quarter inch away from the sides of the fabric. So that's another time when I do not skimp on pinning. Um, there's no reason for me to cut the corners because believe me, if you cut the corners, things get out of alignment. It's more frustrating to have to seam rip and grab your Jack the Ripper um, and then take out your seam and re-sew it. So I like to make sure Anytime I'm sewing curves, rounds, um, that I pin, and I do not cut the corners on that. 
And then what I want to show you is I have a quilt top piece here. One of the other times that I do not like to skip on pinning. And let me make sure I get this in, in the angle here. So on this area here, you'll notice, let me, there we go, that I have seams coming together. And when I have seams coming together, I always pin um, and make sure that it's nice together because your eye is gonna notice more often than not if when seams come together, if they're not in alignment. So I like to pin on both sides of the flaps. Um, I tend to, on those seams, I tend to iron my seams open to make sure that that is nice and secure and that way I can see where that seam is. And then I also like to pin, you'll see here, let me hold it up a little bit. This is where I piece something together. I like to pin that flap down so that it doesn't get wonky and sewn and misshapen. So once again, um, where my seams come together and then if I have something that's pieced, I like to piece the flap down. And I will do that for when I'm lo sewing long, long strips. So this is putting um, a long um, piece block together like a row of quilt blocks and then I make sure that I do these things. So that's another area where I am not going to scrimp on pinning. Okay, so I'm back here on my other camera angle. And I wanted to talk really quick about the quilt in back of me. Because the quilt in back of me has some of those images that I talked about. So let me turn on my lighted pin picker upper and I can point those out for you. So you'll see that we have these long skinny strips. Once again, one of those times that I do not scrimp on pinning is when I have long skinny pieces. Another one is curved elements. So this one has got lots of curves on um, those blocks there. And I pinned like there was no tomorrow when I was making this quilt. The other one is also the long skinny strips here that you see on my sashing and my borders. So this quilt kind of takes all of those reasons why I don't skip pinning and this one I did a lot of pinning whereas a lot of my other quilts I may not pin so much but this was definitely one where um, my cool pins got a good workout. So with that said I think that about covers it for this week on more sewing with Michelle. Keep in mind you're not going to want to um, miss out on these two products. You can click on the link in the description and you'll be able to find my cool pins and also the lighted pin picker upper. I hope you have a fabulous week out there. Everyone be safe. And until next Monday, bye-bye.